unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord. What do you believe in God for this evening? Huh? Say it. What do you believe in God for this evening? Raise your faith to see God perform something mighty for you this evening. There's a skin disease that is being healed right now. Even as I'm speaking, you've been having a very funny skin disease. And I feel within about a week from now, you're going to testify and say, He sent out a word and God healed my disease. In the name of Jesus Christ. I feel doors are opening up for you. Somebody, financially, many things have been stuck. But God is opening doors for you in the name of Jesus. Somebody receive it. Say it is mine. I know. I know who I'm talking about. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just raise your hands and let's worship God. Somebody raise your voice and worship God. Speak in other tongues. We worship you, Holy Spirit. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, my God. There is no one like you, my God. There is no one like you, my God. Come on, somebody tell Jesus, there is no one like you. There is no one like you. Worship the Holy Spirit. Worship the Holy Spirit. Worship the Holy Spirit. Worship the Holy Ghost. Worship the Holy Ghost. Worship the Holy Spirit. And he is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead.
Father, you are God. Somebody telling you, our God. Every knee bows and every tongue confesses that you are God. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are God. You are God. You are God.
nuestro nombre. Are my, those, those are my private collection. You know those songs you love to sing without machines? Because they are deeper than machines. I remember those days you'd wake up and look at a bad report. And you sing the name of the Lord. <laughs> We don't sing. I wish some of you understand what I'm saying. There are some songs you must have on your fingertips. Because they're easy to cram. You can even talk them through. For those of you who can't sing, don't worry, the scriptures encourage speaking to yourselves in hymns. (laughs) Some of you speak when you're singing. Praise God. I just remember those days when you're going through too much and all you have is to remind yourself that I'm in a name. I'm in a name. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I see. (laughs) I'm not moved by what I see. Those are my personal songs. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I hear. Hey. I am moved by the word of the Lord. I am moved by the word of the Lord. Then I remind myself that I shall be a half and above only and not below. <laughs> oh, that I'm all that I'm going to go by Christ with strength is me. Oh! <laughs> Tell your neighbor it's working. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise of God is here. Praise of God is here. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 61, verse 2. Psalms 61, verse 2. <clears throat> Psalm 61, verse 2. If you're there, you say, Amen. One, two, three, let's go. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Read it again. From the end of the earth 
will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Read it one more time. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, he says, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Say, Amen again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to share many things that that verse means and scripture that many people don't know it means. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. That many people don't know what it means. When the psalmist says that from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee and my heart, when, when my heart is overwhelmed, he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This state of man has been going through the total sum of everything that, that, causes, that would lead a man to give up. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. He's speaking of a place where somebody can get overwhelmed in spirit. You can be overwhelmed because of your state financially. You can be overwhelmed because of a diseased life. You can be overwhelmed because of a family problem. Your husband can overwhelm you. The state of your child can overwhelm you. David is in a state of overwhelmingness. He's overwhelmed. The Hebrew word for overwhelmed is translated something like covered, covered in grief, engrossed with a darkness that just then seemed to leave, turned aside. The feeling that you're not walking the course you're supposed to be following. You are walking a certain direction that you are not ordained to walk. You feel it like it's not your portion to walk it, but you're walking it every day. That's an overwhelmed spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. But when, when David is praying, he says, and I'm overwhelmed, when my heart is overwhelmed, he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Take me to a rock that is higher than I. Take me, lead me, lead me. The word there is lead. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Lead me to a rock. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Praise God. Let me explain what that means. We are living in one of the most sensitively painful times of the church of Christ. The church of Christ is growing and dying at the same time. Somebody sent me a documentary, little document. No, it wasn't a document, it was a little document. And I was reading that in a certain given space of time, in the UK, United Kingdom, right? In the UK, 500 churches closed. And these churches were turned into either restaurants or homes, both by different individuals. 500 churches closed down. And in the same period, 485 mosques were built. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There was something that built these 500 churches. There was something that left these 500 churches and gave way not only to their demise, but replacement with Islam. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are living in one of the most painful times of life. We're living in a time when fathers ought to discern what it means to really carry pangs, and I'm meaning true pangs of the church of Christ today. We are living in a time where if you went back about 100 years ago, they would never dream that that time would exist in church history. Because the church looked different 100 years ago. It looked different 100 years ago. The 1905 experiences, 1901, 1905, 
the Pentecostal movement. From that time you have the Azusa. You have the Holiness movement. You have the, 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 the prayer movement. You have the charismatic movement. One thing was leading into another. One thing was leading into another. The, the flames were changing altars, but there were still flames. Are you hearing me? But now we are living in a time that is painfully of most uncertainty for the church of Christ today. For the church of Christ today. Today people can't differentiate truth and fallacy. They, can't, they, they don't even know the difference anymore between truth and lies. Today on our altars we are preaching lies as truth. And we are killing people who are keep preaching truth. I can tell you the people who fight me most, majority of them are twice my age. That means that they are fathers who had power and the authority to call me and I would respond to their call immediately. And sometimes I ask myself the question, is it that they are fighting me because they don't know or they are fighting me because they don't want to know? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Because if you wanted to know the truth, all you had to do was ask and confirm whether the things that you hear are true or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if you fight your own son in the same land, if he goes to another nation, God will still bless him there. But these are your own people. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the people who fight us are not Muslims. They are not witch doctors. They are not heathens. No. These are people who hold the Bible. They hold the Bible. That doesn't worry me at all because I know their end. But it aches my spirit that they were deceived. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people think that people come to Fanero and then they tell them, sin! And then people go back home and then they say, yeah, they've told us to sin. They think that's what you're doing here for. They think that's why parents bring their children here. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I was to tell somebody tomorrow that on Facebook, type your personal story of walking out of sin, Facebook would fill tomorrow morning. How many bear witness? You think those, eyes, those hands are red? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's painful. It's very painful. It's very painful. Of course, I know we win. We will always win. So I'm not really worried about me. I'm worried about them. You remember when, when the guy is weeping for Jesus and Jesus says, no, don't weep for me. Weep for your children. Weep for the people who have been denied truth. For you, you know, I know it. But weep for the people who have been denied truth. They don't enter there and they refuse others to enter there too. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't believe that somebody can wake up in the morning and say, this ministry preaches this, you've never been there, you've never had their doctrine, you've never had their teaching, you've never had one someone you had, someone told you. That's why I tell people, I'm looking for somebody, they call somebody. And, and another person, they call they. They say, they say, they say. And we would do told you, are you the one who had? No, but me, I heard that they say. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes I sit in my bed and I'm like, God, what is wrong with the church today? Maybe for people who I pray might be live streaming and have questions, let me answer them a little. You cannot preach that it's okay to sin in Uganda and have a ministry. Come on, answer me. You can't. You can't say that it is okay for sin to be there since you are born again. Jesus died for you, died for all your sins. So it's okay for you to sin even if your inward man is born again and your outward man, even if he does anything, as long as your inward man is safe, it's okay to sin. You cannot preach that nonsense in this land. If you preached it, Fanero would preach against it.
Have I set the record clear? So now, the people who say it, are they saying it because it's true they hear us saying it? Or they don't want to know the truth because they fear? <laughs> and that's what makes me know we shall confirm their fears. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. I, tell, I told him, I was, I was the man of God, and I told him, when you are falsely accused, know now you're preaching the truth. <laughs> but if everything you're preaching is right, even to the Muslim, <laughs> then worry about yourself. You might be political. Praise God. So, that's why some of you, they don't understand why you come to Fanura every Thursday. But why is he going? Now you, your age, you have children, you're sitting in sin. <laughs> Praise God. But there is always an answer to that. Preach more grace. Praise God. Preach more what? More grace. Jesus was extreme. If, listen, he was extreme. You can't get a woman caught in adultery and you tell her go for free. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But she did not sin anymore. It's not on record that she sinned again. So, the message grace is another thing. It's one thing. But many other doctrines in the body of Christ are misunderstood and they are taught wrongly. And sometimes our labor is very simple to show you what is truth. It's like somebody says, what? what's really grace? Grace is simple. The grace message shows the right way to walk out of sin and anything else that is not of God. That's the only difference. Your way is to stop doing it. And then the law, the Bible says by the law no flesh is justified and then again you continue doing it even when you don't want to do it anymore. Our way is to submit it to God to work in us to stop. Do you understand? Paul one time had an issue with his early people, contemporaries. He says, Esther, now, are you saying that because we don't follow your old customs and way of ministry and doing this, it means that we are sinners or the worst in the world? Because, you see, some people think that the only way you will get um, right with God is by doing the law. So, there's a frivolous accusation based on the fact that because some people are not following the way of the law. Therefore, they are wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because we are not using your formula, therefore we are what? We are wrong. No. We are not wrong because we are not following the law for justification. The Bible has told us that by the law, no flesh shall be justified. Hallelujah. No flesh shall be what? Justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. In another scripture in Corinthians, it says the strength of sin is the law. We know that the moment we put the law on that altar, sin is going to be strengthened. So every time we preach grace, we are fighting sin. And the accuser of the brethren changes our testimony because he knows the power of fighting sin. Are you hearing me? He knows the power of fighting sin. There is the power of fighting sin. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. He says, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Grandma, if you want to get rid of sin, what do you do? And put what? Grace. Because Romans is very clear. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So they know the moment you remove a man under the law and put him under grace, sin is not going to have dominion over him. So what do they do? They fight and accuse you for saying that you are telling men to sin. Such that you're disqualified in introducing the person of grace because the devil knows that once you put a man under grace, sin shall not have dominion over him. And if you stay and keep a man under the law, because of the law, no flesh is justified. That means they'll fall short every day because they are under the law. Wow. How silly is the devil? And it's so that we all can't figure it out. 
Munyambe banai. He saw we cannot all figure it out. We figured it out long ago. That is why when they attack you, preach more grace. Oh, grace, extreme grace. You preach more. Because the more, the more, the, the more the grace, the more the freedom. In fact, if there is, a, there is truly a word called extreme grace. Eh? It's like extreme love. <laughs> extreme mercy. Extreme strength, you know. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you see, more people are understanding us every day. And that is what strengthens me. Who bears witness? Many people are understanding us every day. We cannot have 500 churches in the UK closing and 485 mosques are being built and we don't realize that there is a problem. When you stand in the church and speak like a Muslim, don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery. Muslims say that too. That can't be power enough to build a mosque. Do you understand what I'm saying? The reason why now people can't differentiate Christianity from any other religion is because we've blown grace out and become legalistic. Muslims are already legal. Many of our religious people are already legal enough. We are just adding on their legality. Balokol and now have become more legal, even more than Muslims. Because at least for the Muslims, they don't fight the message. Christians fight the message of grace. Let me tell you, the more grace leaves the church, the more mosques will thrive in the nation and any other people. Some of you read what you see she wrote. They're refusing people to announce for miracles, signs and wonders. Because some people played in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when I read the article, I saw that the guy behind it has a Muslim name. But I know what he was trying to do. How did we get to a point where people doubt the power of the Christian? Do you understand what I'm saying? Something must happen. That is why, preach, tell your neighbor, preach the gospel than you have ever preached it before. Make a deliberate mind to preach the gospel than you have ever preached it before. Tell your neighbor, do it. We can't, listen, we cannot continue playing. We can't. Win souls at any cost. The career God has given you, firstly commit it in the things of God, then other things. But everywhere you are, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. In and out of season, be ready to preach the gospel. You women who they send messages at night, use that, at that platform. Hi, I want to be your friend. Send devotionals every morning. Until it blocks you. Until it blocks you. Use your beauty to preach. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are going to preach the gospel. Tell your neighbor we are going to preach the gospel. How many of you are working on Operation Unchurched? You are working on it? Even me, I am working on it. We must see something in our land. No eye has seen, he has had. We have a hope for UK. Africa is the hope for the church. I am telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. God sloped. Now he's in Africa. <laughs> that is why I can't understand how you fail to win a soul. Anyway, to be continued. So, there are many things that are, have been replaced in the body of Christ. And I'm going to show you some things today. You'll understand this message. I'm going to show you some things today. You know, I used to wonder, many years ago, why is it that we don't have results in the body of Christ? Because I used to see, do you know people who struggle to, to, as if they are helping God, who doesn't want to help? Have you been around a man of God and then you see a brother or a sister, and it's as though they are helping a God who doesn't want to help? They are serving a God who is not interested in their ministry. They are praying to a God who is not interested in their prayer. And God told me simply, choose. If you know, choose. Like I mentioned, these scriptures are able to make thee wise unto salvation. That wisdom given in your spirit is what brings salvation to you. 
If you know the wisdom of God, you cannot say that you preach truth and fail. You cannot fail when you preach truth. There might be things that might cause you to think you'll fail, but you cannot fail. Because all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. Somebody say amen. You cannot fail when you're preaching truth. You can't fail when you're a believer of truth. You can't fail. Hallelujah. Now, I'll give you an example. The Bible says that when I'm overwhelmed, take me to a rock that is higher than I. Today when we are teaching, when men are overwhelmed, we don't take them to higher rocks. We take them to rocks below. We take them to rocks below. We take them to rocks below. Know ye not in Corinthians when he speaks of the law, he says that the ministry of death, which was written on the tablets of stone. So the law also was on a kind of rock. It was written. Okay. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The law itself was written also on a what? On a rock. But the rock of the law is different from the rock of your salvation, which is Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews that he was the rock from which they what? They drank. He was that rock. The rock was Christ. Somebody say amen. The rock was what? Was Christ. But you see, the Bible says, if the ministration of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away with. He says, uh huh, next verse. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? In other words, the, 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 the ministry of the law of death was written on stone. The ministry of life was written on the Spirit. The Spirit of God bears the inscription of the ministry of life. That is why God does not separate grace from Spirit. Grace and Spirit are one entity. Because grace is inscribed on the Spirit. Are you hearing me? Grace is an inscription on the person of the Holy Spirit. That is why in Galatians it says, You foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? For how be it you began in the Spirit? And now you seek to be perfected in the flesh. You see that? You began in the spirit. That is grace. You began in the spirit. He substituted grace for spirit. You began in the spirit and now you seek to be what? Made perfect by the flesh. Are you seeing? You began in the spirit. You began in the spirit. They, they began in grace. Grace, spirit, they are one. Grace is inscribed in the spirit. Because the ministry of life is inscribed in the Spirit. Grace is inscribed in the Spirit. Grace is life, right? And the ministration of death is inscribed, inscribed in the what? In the tablets of what? Of stone. Are you following me? Are you following me? Now, in John chapter 1, verse 15, the Bible says, John bear witness. He bore witness of him. And Christ saying that as that this, this was he, he says, of whom I speak. He was talking about Jesus. This was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me, he says, is preferred before me. For he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Next verse. And he says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. They preferred none. They tell you John the Baptist says the guy who is coming before me is preferred before me. He's above me. He's greater than me. He's higher than I. What about Moses? But the Bible tells us that no man born by a woman was as anointed as John the Baptist. Do you remember that? They say no man born by a woman was as anointed as John the Baptist, including Moses. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen any greater than John the Baptist. None. Even your Moses. John the Baptist was greater than Moses. Which brought the law? 
Are you hearing me? And it says, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom, now you who is born again, you and I, is what? Greater than John the Baptist. That's beautiful. Somebody say amen. So, if they tell you that there is no one born of women, who has risen greater than John the Baptist, and you know Moses was born by a woman, and they tell you that no one born by a woman is greater than John the Baptist, and John the Baptist tells you that there is one which is coming after me. He is preferred before me. For he was before me. He is above me. He is ahead of me. And of his fullness, he says, have we received grace for grace? Who is that? Jesus. He says, for the law, now John is explaining, was given by Moses. Who is below me? He says, but grace and truth came by Jesus. Is it not enough to know? The rock higher. Every time you see and you go back to the Lord, you're going to a lower rank. You're, you're putting your life lower. Every time sin appears in your life and you look to a rock which is higher, it is Christ. It is Christ. Tell me about it is Christ. Let me tell you something. The Lord showed me a secret many years ago and it changed my ministry. Can I show you? Many of you read Psalms 45. My heart is indicting a good matter. Right? And I'm speaking of the things that I've made touching the king. He says, and now my tongue is like a pen of a ready writer. Did you read that? Many of the, you, how many of you have read that? You have read it? This changed my, my life. When the Bible says that my heart is indicting a good matter, he says, I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. And he says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Who is a ready writer? That's a scribe. Right? That's the distinction of a scribe. And that is the one he carries later in the Gospels and says, and every scribe which is instructed in the things of the kingdom. He is likened unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth, the Bible says, out of his treasure. Yeah, that thing in the spirit. New and old. Out of you, all the new stuff start coming out. That means if men want to know all those wisdom, they talk to you. If men want to re relate to the newest stuff in the spirit realm, they will talk to you. Why? Because that's the grace of an eternal spirit. You access both the new and the old. Out of you it flows. But that is a scribe which is instructed. Not just any Christian. A scribe. And now we're talking of scriptures just not written by hands. But the tongue of a ready writer. He says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Hallelujah. He says, I speak of the things which I have met touching the king. He says, and my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. And what does the next verse say? The next verse says, thou art fairer, you the preacher, than the children of men. He says, grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God has blessed thee forever. Why? Because grace is poured on your lips. The tongue of a ready writer. Is grace poured on a man's lips? The moment God puts the message of grace on your spirit, your ministry will change. Your family will change. Your marriage will change. Your relationships will change. Your meditations will change. Your education will change. Your body will adjust. Your children will respond. Why? Because your tongue is a pen of a ready writer. Your lips are flowing with grace. And what does God do? He blesses you forever. He told me, as long as you preach grace, you will be persecuted. But you will never stop to increase. Let me tell you something. No man can stop me. I'm not encouraging you in the Lord. I know. No man can stop me. Because I didn't call myself. I didn't anoint myself. I know nothing of myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your lips. Your lips. The Bible says they are poured out with grace. Grace is poured onto your lips. That's the tongue of a ready writer. That's the scribe instructed in the things of the kingdom. Put him down. <laughs> Put him down. <laughs> Just put him down. <laughs> put him down. <laughs> you can only find that in a grace ministry. 
Where are Paul flows while you're still preaching? <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, take me to a rock. That is why if you are a child of God, examine yourself whether you've been the faith. Always keep an examination to make sure that you're never deceived into the law again. Because the law, the Bible says, the letter killeth. Listen, the man called it the ministration of death. That means when a man stands on the pulpit and starts preaching the law, he's killing people every day. When a man says, ah, those grace preachers, they're preaching the wrong doctrine, he's killing people every day. Because the equal sum of that is that there are people who could have benefited from that, but you have derailed their faith because of wrong accusations. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, I, I, and, and you see, those people have a place also in the spirit. You remember when Paul was saying in Romans 3, 8, he says that some say that we say, falsely say that we say that let us do evil so good should come. And he added the last word, their damnation is just. God, it is justice for them to be damned. And they are damned. If you know the meaning of damned, go in the Oxford Dictionary. The concise Oxford Dictionary. And read the word damnation. Their damnation is just. Because it's saying, why, okay, why are they deliberately fighting it? When they could have gone out to seek the truth and find it. Their damnation is just. Because you can't fight the message. You can't fight the gospel. You can't kick against the pricks. I'm not scaring you, I'm encouraging you. <laughs> because you don't fight it. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot kick the gospel. You can't. You can't. You can't. When I discovered it, the Lord told me the moment you continue preaching grace, I will bless you forever. <laughs> forever I'm blessed. Forever I am blessed. Forever. I'm forever blessed. Tell anybody I'm forever blessed. Because I believe in the grace. Say it again. I'm forever blessed. Because I believe in grace. I'm fairer than the children of men. Ho, 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 ho. That's my meditation. I'm fairer. That means you're better than the children of men. You're better in every aspect. And God will do everything possible to make you better in everything. If he has to increase your finances, he'll increase them. If he has to increase your spiritual life to cause you to do science miracles, to win souls, he will do everything possible to cause you to be fairer than the children of men. Why? Because grace is poured into thy lips. That's why your heart only indicts good matters. It indicts, it meditates good matters. It, 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 it speaks of the things. Give me the amplifier. He says, my heart overflows with a goodly theme. He says, I address my son to a king and my tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. It, it, you, 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 he, he, he says, his heart overflows. When a man understands grace, your heart overflows. It overflows. One time a certain man of God, after preaching, he, he called me aside and said, come and I pray for you. You have released too much. Come and God fills you. <sighs> because I'm humble, <laughs> because I'm humble, um, I closed my eyes and was praying, Father, where he has removed fear. Where he has not... And while he's doing that, for me, my head, in my spirit, I'm saying, thank you because I'm too full and he doesn't know it. I'm overflowing and he didn't even get it. Because out of me flow rivers of living water. I don't have time anymore to fill. Because rivers can't be filled any further. They can only flow out into tributaries. They, their source is not limited. Matakaraba. In my heart. But here the man is praying for me. For God to fill the part that has been empty. When you understand grace, you overflow. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you overflow. That means that when a man of grace is preaching, he's overflowing. <laughs> when a man of the law is preaching, he's reducing. Do you understand what I'm saying? It says that after the end of the service, they have to fill there. <laughs> but no, could you say, fill my cup, Lord. <laughs> when you're a man of the spirit you overflow you remember when Paul is finishing his last ministry 
He says, I'm like now, I'm poured out like an offering. His cup is running over. He's now poured out. He has run the race. He has finished the course. Now he's like, he's like an offering. He's poured out. He looks at himself as an offering, poured out. What was working on him, his life, was extending. Are you hearing me? He says, now I'm ready to be offered up. And my time of departure is at hand. The place of offered up is like I'm overflowing. His cup was over, it was overflowing that now, below him offering, you know, it was just an overflow. You understand what I'm saying? He, he had finished his course. He had kept the faith. So, he was, he was just an offering. He was like an offering. He, his cup was running over. Do you understand what I'm saying? And under that, everybody under him. Huh? That's what he says in Philippians. For whether in the bonds or in the defense, under what? The confirmation of the gospel. He says, ye are all partakers of my grace. Ye are all partakers. That means there was something on, on Paul that used to pour into the people below him. That they could defend the grace according to the grace operating on him. That they would, they would confirm the gospel because they partook of the grace operating on his life. Tell your neighbor I'm in the overflow. Tell your spirit I'm in the overflow. In the name of Jesus. Because I'm a grace child. I don't run out. I don't know that you know what you're saying. Say it like you know what you're saying. Say I'm a grace child. I never run out. People in the back say I'm in the overflow. In Jesus name. But when you're under the law, you're pouring out. Oh, servant of God. You have poured out. <laughs> No. The servant of God is overflowing. <laughs> that's, that's my portion. That is why I can't wake up one day and I don't have a sermon to preach. Because I'm an overflowing spirit. <laughs> I already have enough for me. I have way extra for many more. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. So, some of you don't understand that it goes back to which message you're dealing with. Are you dealing with the law? Are you dealing with the grace? The moment I understood this message, everything of my life changed. If I see a man under grace still struggling, I have news for you. You have not yet understood grace. I have news for you. You have not yet understood grace. The day you understand grace, your life will overflow in every aspect. This changed my life for good when I understood that I don't need to struggle for anything. I don't need to struggle to do anything. I don't need to struggle to walk out of anything. And let me tell you, I'm not bound to anything. I can walk out of anything anytime. Because sin does not have dominion over me. And because sin is not my concept, it's not my testimony and my portion. Death is neither. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sin is as a result of... It's not death, it's as a result of sin. So if sin is dealt with, then death is dealt with in your life. And when I'm talking about death, I'm talking of spiritual first and then physical. Many of the things working in your life are not working the way they ought to because you have not understood the spirit of grace. When you understand the spirit of grace, everything else will start working. There's a man who goes on the mountain, Father, bring people, bring people, bring people. You, for me, I'm saying, thank you, because they must come. They have no choice. They have to come. How can they not come? This is the light, shining in darkness. Darkness, comprehended him not. Comprehended him not. Not does not come. See, darkness, as I told you one time, darkness is not in a present continuous experience of understanding light. No. Light is in the present day continuous experience of shining. The light shines, present continuous. Darkness, right? Comprehended it, past tense, not. That means light is constantly shining. Darkness failed to understand light and stopped there. And then you cut now this one, I'm done. I'm not going to push again this. I cannot comprehend it. So, it's wrong to say the devil didn't understand you. No. The right statement is the devil never understood you. You are a chosen generation. A peculiar people. Fairer than the children of men. 
That means you are above sons of men. In every aspect, you can't be ranked with them. Somebody sent me a video of, uh, you know the footballer Ibrahimovic? It was very interesting. Some of you probably will see it soon because it moves. So they were talking to this guy about Europe. He's 35. He was saying, oh, you know Ibrahimovic? I don't even know him. He's a stri- striker in Manchester United. Right? Is that it? Recently he made a, an equalizer. So, <laughs> no, I dreamt it. So. <laughs> now Ibrahimovic, this footballer, he's under an interview. They're asking him, he was saying, you know, when I came to Europe, people thought that I was on a wheelchair because I was 35, but I'm showing them what I am because that's what lions do. Lions, when they come out, they shine, they make it happen. So he's talking about that whole philosophy of how he feels like he's, an, he's a lion. So this, 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 um, this, this, this guy, interviewer, asks him, ask him another question. He says, um, in your own opinion, when you look at, um, into the English Premier League, who do you think are the best strikers in the Premier League? He said, uh, Lukaku is a good guy. Uh, I think, who, who else did he mention? Aguero, Aguero is a very good guy too. Yeah, I think those guys are doing a good job. So the guy asks him, so why haven't you mentioned yourself? <laughs> and in that, in that, in that, in that pompous Swedish accent, he says, no, the lions don't compare themselves with people. <laughs> 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 the lions, they don't compare themselves with people. <laughs> I say, this guy understands the gospel. <laughs> I say, this guy understands the gospel. Tell your neighbor, you're fairer than the children of men. <laughs> Praise God. So, you, I'm not praying for you to be the best businessman in the world. No. Don't even compare yourself with any man who is not born again and he does business. You lions don't compare themselves with humans. More than conqueror. Not a conqueror. More than conqueror. Praise God. Praise God. Lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, it's like, I'll give you an example. Some people struggle with attacks on their lives, right? Demon spirits, generational curses, things follow them. Praise the Lord. And it's true that people are under attacks. But what the church today sadly is doing, in many, many circles I've seen, when a man is overwhelmed by demonic attack, we go to rocks below them. You understand what I'm saying? Now let me explain what I mean. The Bible says that you are seated in Christ far above, far above, not high, above. There's a difference between high and above. If I was saying high, I would mean if the devil is here, right? You are on that roof. You're higher than him. When I say above, I mean to say you will go, go out of that building and go above that even if he tried to go high, the limitations on him can't allow him to access you. Now, the Bible says you're seated far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world. Now, there's something there, but also in the world to come. That means in, in 2020, if there's a name that is going to come, you're above it. You are above it. Now, if you are overwhelmed by attacks in your life, don't go to rocks lower. Some people are wasting time in principalities. Now let me tell you which demon this is. Right, Nakazinda. 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 N-A-K-A-Z-I-N-D-A. Nakazinda is a spirit. Nakazinda is a spirit. Nakazinda is a spirit. That attacks people in certain situations of this and that and that and that. And these are the signs. You start burning clothes on a flat iron. You get jobs and jobs disappear. They fire you every day. The poor guy doesn't even tithe. 
they, 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 they do this to you. Then you send a kazinda underline. Next, dungu. 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 You know the songs we used to sing? Dungu nga higa, higa nechiro. That spirit makes you work night shifts when they're paying you little. That spirit makes you work during the day when they pay you little. When you have that spirit, you can't increase. You can't multiply. Kumbe the woman didn't give fast fruit. Dungu, Dungu intervenes in people's businesses and the next thing you know, money starts to get lost. You start working, but why do you think, even if you buy something and you are going to earn off money, the dollar goes down and that thing dies. You have Dungu. Aiga, Aiga Nechiro, Nayenga Robunani. He works hard, but he does not earn. Underline. And then people say, oh, wow, that is the truth. One more thing that is happening in my life. Rock slower, principalities, powers are under you. You're studying what is under you. You, you, are, you are studying what is under you. You're, you're studying the rocks on which you're standing. And then they tell you now, the demon which refuses people to get married. Then they give it a name. Then they bring out some of you, by the way, you, you, many of you, your local names, Tiganda names, they can be traced to demons. Mosisi. Namakura, that demon which brings diseases on you. And then you get what? Namakura. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you find a Christian. And they know every demon in the world. Everything that happens. Even if they knock something like, what? They say, huh? Kaula. 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 Oyo kaula oyo. Oyo maweje. Oyo maweje. Then they talk and the mic is off. Oyo rima. Oyo rima. Because they taught you every demon. Oh! He says your obedience has come abroad, oh man. He says, and now I would rather have you wise. And to that which is good and very simple concerning evil. You have no business with the devil. You have no business with Kawula. You have no business with Musisi. You have no business with, with, with Ruima. You have no business. You're seated above. Above, tell your name I'm sitting above all principalities and powers. Hey! I have no business knowing what bewitches. No, I have business knowing the author and the finisher of my life. He that began a good work in me, seeing it to accomplishment to the day of Christ. I don't care whether my uncle or my auntie or my grandfather ate his bitter fruits. My teeth shall not be set on the edge. That's what the Bible says. Baba ya samira samira bibi. Nange samira wange yesu. Namukiza. Let the Holy Ghost get me too. He says in those days. Give me the message. He says in those days. Huh? Give me the message version. He says in those days. When that time comes. You won't hear that old proverb anymore. Parents ate the green apples. Their children got stomach aches. In that day it won't be hard. Mbuno because your grandfather. Oh. But because your grandfather did witchcraft, it should follow you. No! Let him do his witchcraft. But I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old is past and now the new. Don't take me to a rock that is lower than I. When I'm overwhelmed, take me to a rock that is higher than I. That is Jesus. Oh, 
ebintu bya jaja ebintu bya jaja ebintu bya jaja ebintu bya jaja munange ebintu bya jaja bikanye ebintu bya jaja sima ina cha kola ebintu bimbuzo tulo ebintu bya jaja bikonkone waka bikonkone waka let them knock they will go they will go they will go one time i have a relative i used to live with and one time a silly cat came when she was pregnant. She remembers this story. This cat used to come on, on the window there. Then it starts crying like a puppy. You know how cats can be. <laughs> now, during that time I'd known God. So I was in my bed. It came first, the second day. It took long, like a week, two weeks. The cat just comes on one wind and starts crying like a baby. And the Lord told me, this is not of God. That day, I went out. You know, the spirit told me, go and introduce yourself. <laughs> I opened that door. And I told it, cut. I'm Apostle Grace. Never come back. I closed that door. That sister of mine can tell you, that cat never came back again. <laughs> it just needed... An introduction. Hello. I'm Apostle Grace. What up? <laughs> hey! Some people, they lock themselves up. In the name of Jesus, we are breaking. We are breaking. Break. 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 Die. 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 Faint. 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 We break. We break. We break. We break. No, no. Hello. I'm Apostle Grace. You heard of the famous story of the man called A.A. Allen. They got demons, tried to get demons out of a kid. Wah! They tried to chase demons out of an individual. Wah! Then they called A.A. Allen and said, we've done everything to get demons out of this person. And these demons have failed to leave. He went in the ear of the demon-possessed individual and said, Hey devil, this is A.A. Allen. He walked away. <laughs> they said the demon left the individual immediately. Yeah. So, the, the guys who were around didn't hear. So they later call him aside and say, Hey, Allen, why did you tell that thing? He said, I simply told it I'm A.A. Hey, Allen. <laughs> Paul, we know! We know! We know! We know! Put your name! We know! We know! We know! We know! You must be known. So that when they, they mention your name, they mention, they mention, they mention. I don't know one time, there's a guy here. He, he, he tried to call. Somebody was, a girl was possessed with demon spirit. And then they decided to call. And then the went, phone went through. But before he put it on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the mouthpiece, I heard the guy in the background saying, we are calling Apostle Grace. We are, the Kadimon says, don't call him. Don't call Apostle Grace. Don't, the demon in the car, don't call Apostle Grace. Why? <laughs> Tell somebody I'm something. I am something. I ascribe to a rock higher. Hey! Another day I was at the airport and I didn't have time to pray. I was in the last, lo you know, that last, uh, that colored room before you. Huh? <laughs> I don't know why you want to call it a lounge, but it doesn't look like a lounge to me. Hey, whatever you call it. The colored room where you even remove your shoes, what? Eh? And then we are about to board in just a few seconds. They're, they're bringing in the last guys. And then a guy calls me and says, my daughter is blind. And I could sense, I asked him, how, what happened? So she just woke up one day, she was a normal girl, and then just woke up and went blind. Just like that, it went blind. 
So I told the guy, but I'm boarding right now. Can you put this girl on phone? She was about 22. So they gave her the phone. Hello? Hello? I told her, darling, you see. See now. See. See, I'm late. See. I can see. Are you seeing? Yeah. Everything around you. Yeah. Bye. Cool. Switch off. I have to go. <laughs> Miracles are easy with you. In the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders happen easily around you. In the name of Jesus. The demonstration, the confirmation of the gospel will work so simple on you that men will think it wasn't hard. You know the way miracles happen in Fanero? You might think they are not miracles because of the way we make them appear. Why? Even those demons know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Condition your spirit. Condition your spirit. Tell your neighbor, condition your spirit. Now, let me ask a simple question before I finish. Ask your neighbor, What is scaring you? Ask them. What are you dreading? Rock higher. When you see things that don't relate very well, rock higher. Rock higher. Rock higher. Rock higher. Rock higher. What does Jesus say? He says I'm above and not beneath. What does Jesus say? He says I'm the head and not the tail. What does Jesus say? Oh, what does he say? Rock higher. Rock higher. I share with people and I told them, look, if you... If you read uh, what they are overwhelmed, it also, like I told you, it has the word of darkness, right? You know how the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You see, night, I was sharing with people yesterday, night is not just a physical experience, no. It is the spiritual experience of a man in darkness until illumination, which is the word. He says that this light shines in darkness. Are you hearing me? He says that you have a sure word of prophecy of which you do good to heed as a light that shineth in darkness until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. So that weeping is ignorance. Weeping will endure when you're ignorant. But joy will come the morning. Morning is not next day. Morning is the point of illumination. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the word is the light that illuminates your day. I don't know whether you get it. For a born again Christian, our day is not tomorrow. Our day is the word. The moment the word hits your spirit, your day has begun. The moment illumination hits your soul, your day has begun. If you get a revelation like some of you now, some of you right now, it is morning. That's why the Bible calls you children of the day. <laughs> it calls you children of the day. Your children of the day. Your children of the day. He says, ye are all the children of light and the children of day. And we are not of the night nor of darkness. We are not. Tell your neighbor we are not. We are not. Because I'm not a child of darkness. I'm not a child of darkness. I'm not a child of night. I'm a child of day. That means every other day, illumination is in my spirit. His word I'm eating every other day. I feed on it. I desire his word more than the word. The necessary food. Every time I'm meditating on the word. I'm thinking on the word. I'm speaking the word. I'm prophesying the word. I'm confessing the word. I'm praying the word. Nothing in any situation takes my eyes of Jesus. That's why I'm a success. Mama, tell your neighbor, Mama, Mama, Mama. I'm a success. I am a success. I am a success. I am a success. Glory to God. I am a success. Glory to God. Do you believe it? I believe it. You know, let me say this before I start to pray. Because something is going to happen in a few seconds. Listen. Listen. As a preacher of the word, there are times something clenches in a man's spirit 
and I can feel it that this one has settled and it's going to cause results. When I was saying as a success, I could feel certain people in their spirits. They got it. They got it. Whoever I'm talking to knows what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus. Start to receive it now. Start to receive it now. Start to receive it now. Now raise your hands and start to speak. Create a different world right now. Child of the day. Child of the day. Child of the day. Come on. Mothers for children. Fathers for sons. Ministers for church. Students for their education. Come on. I want you to take 60 seconds or a bit more and proclaim things in the atmosphere. Can you pray like you're up to something? Can you pray like your prayer is changing something? Like your child's destiny depends on that prayer. Like your ministry depends on that prayer. Like your family depends on that prayer. Like your vision depends on that prayer. Like your life depends on that prayer. Like your marriage depends on that prayer. Rock that is higher. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Believe me, you're redeeming the next five years. 
You're redeeming your next six years. You're redeeming your next ten years. Power it out! Hey! I release it. I release it. Higher. God wants you higher. God wants you higher. Problem on my right. You are around there. God is healing you right now. Are you the one? Come. Come. Which ear? Oh, come. Give me a hand. Right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. I want you to check it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hey, Jesus. About the Master. Savior. Jesus. Like raindrops after the rain. Oh, Jesus. Give me your hand. God is fixing you. Power of the Holy Ghost. Let the heavens and the earth proclaim the kings and kingdoms. So, Lord. Away, but there's something about that. Now, listen if you're sick, touch where it's paining. God is healing you now, this very moment. Start to receive your healing right now. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here and you've been oppressed. Possessed, afflicted by demonic power. Right this very moment. Start to bring them. Right this very moment. Put them down there. Deliverance is taking place now. I'm introducing you to a rock that is higher. I see fibroids living. God is delivering people now. They say that in your family all the women will never get married. Hey, hey. You're being delivered now. You will marry. Whether the devil wants it or the devil doesn't want it. The fossils of limitation are broken up you. Chains are breaking right now. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I feel God is delivering serious issues now. Witchcraft under this anointing cannot stand. Are you seeing what is happening? Are you seeing what is happening? Are you seeing what is happening? Are you hearing what is happening? Demons are literally screaming out. Even before I rebuke them. Because they know. Who we are. Your life is changing. Now I want you to take just five seconds and clap for God clap for the rock of your salvation the message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International for more information contact us on telephone number 041 466 
or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.